keeping this simple. You're welcome. There you go. Okay. So head of the humerus, okay, there. Well, hang on, let me get something. What you gotta realize is the humerus and the femur are really freaking similar. Okay, they, they might not look identical, but they are really close. Okay, really close. If you know one, you kind of know the other. Uh, so here is the head of the humerus. That's the head of the femur. On the humerus, you got your greater and lesser tubercle. You see them? Greater tubercle, lesser tubercle? Yes. Remember, why are there bumps here? What are they? Areas where what happens? Muscles connecting. Good. What's wrong? So you have your greater and lesser tubercle on the humerus. You have a greater and lesser trochanter on the femur. Can you kind of see where we're going here? Mm -hmm. Like they're real similar. Look at the bottoms, right? Like they're close. They're, they're, their surfaces are very similar to one another. Just got to keep that in mind as we go. So head of the humerus, greater and lesser tubercle, as I just showed you. You've got a deltoid tuberosity there. Deltoid tuberosity. Is that weird lump in there? Can I make it out? Deltoid tuberosity. What do you think connects it to deltoid tuberosity? What's this big triangular muscle called? Uh-uh. That's down here. Your muscle. Your deltoid. Yeah, that's your deltoid. Uh, your deltoid come, then comes down and connects to the humerus there. Let's lift your, lift your arm. So if you take your hand and grab your shoulder and lift it, you can feel that muscle flex. It's going to come down. It's going to connect right there and lift that arm up. Okay? Deltoid tuberosity. Uh, and then at the base of whatever this is, the humerus, there's a few things we got to discuss. For me, we're going to talk trochlea, capitulum, and olecranon fossa. Trochlea, capitulum, and olecranon fossa. So let's have that conversation. Now, let me say this. Medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, fair game. But I want to talk trochlea, capitulum, and olecranon fossa. like to have. All right, here we go. Uh, let's keep the right side. All right. <clears throat> Remember we talked about shapes of articular surfaces and I said it's hard to dislocate your elbow because of the shape or the articulation? Like the humerus up here on the shoulder, real shallow, easy to dislocate. But your elbow, pop your elbow to us, like you got to work on that. You got to work on popping the elbow out. Look at the shape or the articulation for the elbow how deep that is mm -hmm. for you to dislocate that that's going to take some work do we agree the way it fits real deep and real tight fit everybody with me now you see this huge thing sticking off right there it's called the olecranon process of the bolt okay the olecranon process and basically that's your elbow right that's your olecranon process big, strong piece of bone sitting off the back. When you extend your arm, it's got to have somewhere to go. That place to go is in the olecranon fossa. Olecranon process, olecranon fossa. So I'm talking about science in here. Did you get a Captain Fossa joke? You're doing very yes. good. All right, so when you extend your arm, you can see how these fit together. Does that make sense? See it? So they fit in quite tightly to one another which yet again makes it very difficult to dislocate the elbow and see how these connect. And right. where your thumb is right now, that's the olecranon fossa? So the fossa, look here, right there. So that's the oh. olecranon fossa. The fossa is the whole. The fossa is an indentation. And Fossas are indentations. Right. Processes stick off of the bone. Excellent. They go together like that. So remember when I, remember when I said knowing the terms is gonna help? This is why. This is why. All right, that's how that fits. Yeah. Oh, then we got to do the trochlea and the capitulum. All right. Remember how I said smooth muscle? It just has a certain appearance to it. Oh, shoot. I lied. This is not the right arm. Well, let me rephrase it. This is not the correct arm. It is, in fact, the right arm. I need a left, though. The, uh, with me. This is like a weird puzzle. Okay. 
cochlea and capitulum. Now, look, when I said that smooth muscle, you kind of got to get a feel to it. Smooth muscle looks like a river flowing. Yes? Yes. We're going to play that game again. It's Mr. Hopper's psyche and how it fits into how I remember things. Trochlea? Trochlea? Sounds very sharp to me. It's pointy. It's a trochlea. Okay. Capitulum. C. Nice and round. Capitulum. Round. Okay. Capitulum is the round structure seen here. The trochlea is the sharp, pointy end. And the way these fit together, here's the radius and the ulna, is, oh, dudes, no, not again. Oh, wait, there it goes. There it is. There it is. They fit together like that right there. So listen, you're just going to have to listen to me. You're going to have to play with this when you, you know, I cut you loose. The ulna fits against the trochlea. Do you see the sharp edge here? Ulna. Yeah, rotate. And then the capitulum. Now, what is your, what's impressive about your arm and the way it moves? What kind of joint is that in there? Mm -hmm. Pivot joint. Pivot joint. Pivot joint. Pivot joint. We're talking about the twisting. Oh. Okay, talking about the twisting. So the capitulum, this round structure, look at the end of the radius. See how round it is? Mm -hmm. It can sit on there and just rotate because of the shape of the articulating surface. So it's got a little band of connective tissue from the ulna wrapped around it because these suckers can just spin all day long. That's how they fit. So make sure you see this before you leave. Might see it again, who can say? Uh, yeah. That's all good, man. I'm, you know, I'm taking over your space. No, no, this is yours. This is yours. It's got to help, though, have me stand right here show you every time. It's great. Right. I love it. Right. All right, so that'll do. Let's go here. Oh, there's the surgical neck and the anatomical neck. But it's not in your lab manual, so we're just going to omit it. Um, we've already sort of described the fit here. I would invite you to learn about this a little bit. Now let's run through the radius and the ulna, make sure we know our parts. Remember that coronoid process I've been telling you about? Well, here we go. All right, <clears throat> first things first. The humerus, hey man, I'm gonna ask you right or left. It's pretty obvious. The olecranon process is on the back of the arm and there's the head where it connects to the glenoid cavity. If that's the back and that's the head, it's gotta be a right. Because if it's here, my arm's gonna bend backwards. <laughs> do we agree? Perfect. So you gotta do right and left on a humerus. Radius and the ulna, I'd never ask you to do that, but I do want you to do the parts. So first things first, ulnas are easy to know. It's an ulna. It's got a U on it, okay? It's got a U on it, probably an ulna. Do we agree? Mm, All right, sure ulna. Is. Electronon process coronoid process, all right? Lecranoid, oh boy, dyslexia is hard. Uh, Lecranon process, coronoid process. Uh, they stick off the bone, just in case you can see here. What else do I wanna say here? Uh, let's do the head of the radius. You know this is a radius? What is it, what is radius? What is a radius? Don't say this bone. This Something about a circle, circle. yeah? Circle, yeah. What's the shape of the end of the radius? Oh, sure. Circle. Because this is that pivot joint, right? It can rotate. Mm, yes, indeed. It's the head of the radius. Uh, and then what I will certainly point out are the styloid processes at the base of the radius and the ulna. Styloid process of the ulna, styloid process of the radius. And I feel like they're not in your manual, but you need to add these in. Okay? You 100% need to add these in. Styloid process of the radius, styloid process of the ulna. You can see them on the screen or just look at me and I'll show you. There's a reason I'm doing this. All right, this is a very important concept in science. Can you see the shape? So there's the styloid process of the ulna. It's very pointy. Styloid process of the radius. Do we agree? Um. The reason we talk about the styloid processes of the radius and the ulna This cups the wrist bone and holds them in place. So dislocating your wrist is, wrist is difficult. Everybody with me? Yeah. This decreases your chance of dislocating your ankle. All right? By having these two strong points at the end, the ankle kind of sits inside of there and can't shimmy side to side. Same story in the wrist. All right? Very similar. Styloid processes here. 
Now here, we'll talk about in a second, they're called the malleoli, the little handles. I love that. single wrist bone. But your lab manual doesn't have them. So I'm not going to do it to you. <laughs> You're welcome. What a shame. Back in my day, Just we had to learn the names of all the carpels. Uh, but now that is the world of the case. So if I have my wrist here, it'll fit into this gap. And it doesn't shimmy side to side because it's held in place by the link of tension they were in. Everybody see how that fits together? Mm -hmm. Alright, so those, what do you call them again? Carpels? Nope. Styloid processes, remember, stylus, right? Something you write with, styloid process, yes? Right, those styloid processes hold these in place. So, what I have for you are carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. Guess what they are on the foot? Tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. Yes. All right, uh, this is a right hand, so you can pretty easily tell. And what I love to ask, okay, what I love to ask is I'll say something like, there's a ring here. Would it be here, here, or there? And folks always screw it up, okay? So let me just, uh, let me just explain myself a wee bit. Here is my hand. Mm -hmm. The carpals are way back here. The metacarpals are in your palm. Everybody see it? Mm -hmm. The phalanges mm -hmm. where your fingers are located. You see how that fits? All right. That's how that fits. The phalanges, the phalanges. Three sections, phalanges. Yes? Yes. Three sections of phalanges. Those are phalanges. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, let's go here. All right, let me tell you what I can see. I can see on your test asking you uh, male versus female pelvis, and that's important knowledge. Grasping variations is important. I can see asking you the bones. So we've already talked about the iliac crests, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, iliac crests. So this is ilia, ischia is on the back, like a skeleton sits on the table. Plop. It's sitting on its iliacs, okay? Or, dang, I'm doing it bad now. Um, ischial bones, there we go, the ischial bones, the ischia. And then the front are pubic bones. So ilia, ischia, pubic bones in the front. So three sections of those uh, cocci on the sides. Now, further on the coxa, I might throw some other stuff in there. Like the, uh, do you have obturator fragments on here? What in the world? Are these not for me either? I just took them out for a reason. No, there's obdurators. Okay. So on the right hand side, page 55, you can see the obdurator foramens. So they are here. I could foresee, like asking you on page 55, the greater sciatic notch, lesser sciatic notch, if it's mentioned. No, they just have greater sciatic notches. Why would I ask you about a sciatic notch? Do you hear a. Yeah, you hear a lot of people with sciatic nerve pain. It's worthy of knowing where that goes through. Okay. Uh, and I also tend to ask about the acetabulum, mostly because I just like saying it over and over again, but you know, it's also important. So the acetabulum is where the femur connects to the leg, right there. That's the acetabulum. Oh, remember we were talking about Bo Jackson earlier? Mm -hmm. So what happened with Bo is he tore his femur out of the acetabulum, and it damaged all the vessels and things that are inside of there, uh, shredded the masses. And it led to very little to no blood flow coming to the entire area of the hip. So all the bones just died internally. Acetabulum. And you said the obturator foramen is where the um, iliac... No, it's just a big opening in oh, the coxal bones. Okay. Yeah, so this is an interesting lightning methodology. I think there's some muscles that go through there. Um, when, where did you say the iliac... Sciatic notch. Is that Thank you. About? Yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. 
All right, so we've got our on page 54, we've got our ilium, ischium, and pubic bones. You can see the sacrum there with the coccyx, yeah, all fair game, pubic arch and pubic synthesis. What's special about the pubic synthesis? What's it made of specifically? Fibrocartilage. Because it's a synthesis, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then we have page 56. Male and female pelvis, worthy, worthy. Do I need to go through this a second time? <coughs> okay. Uh, then we have the fib, uh, femur, femur. So, capitis. All right, <clears throat> let me just grab this here. Do I have fovea capitis in here? I do, good. If I were you, I'd just write in fovea capitis. On the right-hand side, part B, page 56, part B at the top, you can see that little dot on the head of the femur, that is the fovea capitis. I think it's not a terrible idea just to mention that, okay? The reason I mentioned the fovea capitis is because, can you see this indentation? That's it right there, um, fovea capitis. Oh, I see it, okay. The reason I mentioned the fovea capitis is because you have a big old ligament, like the size of your little finger, that's attached right there that holds the femur into the acetabulum. Like, how do you keep the femur from dislocating from the acetabulum? There's a huge ligament that connects the acetabulum to the femur at that fovea capitis. Now, the leg is capable of doing all kinds of motion. Yes, yes. we've all seen it. But it's held in place by that huge honking ligament. So it's worthy to mention the fovea capitis. Uh, yeah, the, the top indentation, the fovea capitis. Uh, now, that's the head, neck. Man, I'm dropping stuff like crazy today. Greater and lesser trochanthers. Do we have linea aspera and all that on here? Not, no. No aspera. Ah. No. Let's go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you add in a couple things because I'm refusing. This is me. This is my I refuse stage. <laughs> okay, you can see on the bottom of the femur, they've got patellar surface, medial and lateral condyles. Yes? Yes. I want you to put in medial and lateral epicondyles as well. You see them here, medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle. These are the places where the dadgum collateral ligaments connect. You should know this. Like, you can, you can see these big lumps on the side. Those lumps, you look at this, see that right there? Flip it over right there. These big lumps are where your collateral ligaments connect. So you, this is something you need to be aware of, man. Like, this is not an inconsequential thing. This is important. These are ligamental connection points. Major ligaments in the knee, major ligaments, connect with these epicondyles. Okay, lateral medial epicondyles. And it's not like this is hard. You know lateral medial condyles, what's above the condyles? The <laughs> yeah, epi upper, okay. epi condyles. Now, is that a right or a left leg? That's our question. Uh, no, he's on the right or left. It's a right. If he's a right. Why would you say that? It does, doesn't it? All right, let's talk. You ready for yet again a John Hopperism? Yes. So I remembered it back in the day. Okay, I'm not going to say this is very professional. So I remembered it. Does that look like a moon to you? Yes. Does it look like a moon? The greater and lesser trochanter and the intertrochantric line. That looks like a moon. Like a skeleton, like a moon, mm. somewhat. <laughs> it would be showing. They're greater and lesser trochanters. So those are always on the back. Does that make sense? Further, where is the patellar surface? Always on the front. So if that's the front, and there's where it connects to the femur, or pelvis, it ain't like that, now is it? It's gotta be like this. This is a right leg. Everybody with me? Yes. Just be able to tell me right and left on the femur. Okay, there's the head. There is the patellar surface, must be in the front. That is clearly a right leg. All right, what's next? Uh, tibia and fibula. Intercondylar eminence. Good Lord, why could I not think about that a second ago? It's not even in the lab manual, is it on here? Yep, oh, there it is, intercondylar eminence. Might as well write that in. <clears throat> why do we want to know about the intercondylar eminence? This is where what connects? Louder. I heard you. What, 
Okay, bear with me. What connects at the intercondylar eminence with the top of the freaking tibia? Pain, heartbreak. That's where your ACL connects. Now, let's try it again. What connects at the intercondylar eminence? Thank you. Good job, folks. Good job. So you have your collateral ligaments there. The ACL will connect right in the middle there. And the PCL is obviously in the back. Okay? PCL is obviously in the back. So I've got my tibia. i got my fibula. If on the test you call it a tibula and a fibula, and you'll be right. Okay, I will count those wrong in a heartbeat. Uh, the way these connect is something like... These are the wrong sides for one another, but let's pretend. Okay, they're going to connect something like this. You're going to have that classic look at the bottom. Everybody with me? And thank goodness we have them labeled. Uh, at the bottom here, these are called the lateral and medial malleoli. Uh, and on the tibia itself, you can have the tibial tuberosity. That's going to be where the patellar ligament connects. And I want you to know those condyles and that intercondylar eminence. On the fibula, I simply want you to know it's the fibula. I don't care about right or left. Like they're complicated. These are complicated bones. Uh, but just know it's a fibula. The tibia, however, you got to be able to tell me right and left. And it's a little more involved. Okay? There's an easy way to do this, and that's to look at the malleolus. What's the malleolus on the tibia always called? Medial. It's always medial. It's always the medial malleolus. And where is the tibial tuberosity always going to be? In the front. So if that's medial and that's the front, what must this be, right or left? It's got to be a right leg. Period. The end. But then there's the more complicated and I would consider more interesting way of knowing that this is a right leg. Oh, my lower back. What did I do? I blamed my child's school. <laughs> All right. Grab your lower leg. Or, or unless you're a cool kid, just sit there and, you know, be cool. But <laughs> grab your lower leg. What you'll feel is on the medial surface, there's a broad bony plate. Mm -hmm. Like there's bone right under the skin. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. Right under the skin. That is bone on bone, you know. Then feel the lateral aspect. It's muscle. Right? Mm -hmm. Lateral aspect is muscle. All right. Look at this. Grab it. Grab it. Can you feel the difference? Holy cow. It's so freaking obvious once you get your hands on it. All right. When I grab a hold of this thing, like I can feel the plate. And then the nothing on the other side. All right? Grab You can tell the difference. It's very obvious once you kind of get your hand on it. You're like, wow, yeah, that flipped underneath the skin. I just felt that in my leg. Yes? Broad bony play on one side, nothing on the other. That's the right leg. So when you're sitting there, on the test, and you go, yes, that's no better. Right leg. Everybody with me? Hopefully. Yes. I hope. All right, cool beans. Yep, already did the knee today. Uh, the foot. All right. <clears throat> Let's do the foot. Is this last but not least? Yes. They give you two bones to know. Don't know why, but they give you two bones to know. They give you the talus and the calcaneus. Um, and these are worthy. Okay, the talus. Remember this? Yes? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can drop too fast today. It's like that. There's the talus sitting on top. Okay. I think about like an eagle talon, now it holds things tightly. There it is. Okay. So it fits right into that concavity and it's very difficult to dislocate this. I, I've told you guys that I give lectures on bones and people break bones afterwards, haven't I? Okay, y'all better be knocking on some wood. Um, yeah, exactly. So I was giving this lecture, and I was like, the only way you're really going to dislocate your ankle is by breaking off the end of the fibula. And that happens sometimes. Somebody gets a hard enough blow, and the foot's planted, that it'll snap the end off the fibula, which is very bad, I might add. It's a very bad thing to happen. Healing this is difficult, and a long time to just go in and replace it all with metal. And you can imagine that's not a fun experience. Mm -hmm. Man, this kid misses class the next day. Gives me an email to the drummer. He's playing flag football. Flag football. Man, 
and the guy fell on my leg, snapped off the end of my fibula. They're telling me I'm going to have major surgery, and I'm going to be out for like a month or so. Can't walk, can't move, going to be in a wheelchair for eternity. So I'm telling y'all, be careful with your brother. Pallas, calcaneus. So if you catch somebody with your heel, catch them with your calcaneus. See the spur sticking off the bottom? That's going to connect to that um, uh, plantar fascia that we described previously. Yes? Mm -hmm. okay, there it is, right there. Um, and then, of course, we just have tarsals, metatarsal phalanges. Tarsals, metatarsals is the top of your foot. And then we have phalanges. Okay? Tarsals, metatarsal phalanges. Works like charm. Yeah. Question. Are the metatarsals um, like kind of like in the in the ball of your foot, like how the metacarpals are in the palm That's of your hand? That's a good question. I'm not sure on the foot. I feel like it's the same. Like, Boy, that looks weird though, doesn't it? I feel like there may be a little more overlap in the foot, but don't quote me on that. Hurts a lot. Is that fair? Yeah. Because now that I think about it, your big toe ain't that big. Or if right. your big toe is that big, frankly, I'd love That's to see it. Weird. That'd be pretty impressive. <laughs> right? Uh, but I think it's they're a little more inset in the foot, if that makes any sense. Don't quote me. I feel like I don't know things now. There's two things today we've talked about that I need to figure out. What was the other one, Gage? Uh, yeah. Are we done? I think we're done. Get to work. I'm going to go write some things down. i got to write some things down. There's research to be done. <laughs>